Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm hooking up this Coleman Lantern, I don't know, 38 foot here in Bristol. And after I get done hooking this up, we gotta talk about that. Stay tuned. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, there's a whole lot of changes. If you are new here, a lot of this isn't gonna make any sense to you. If you are a subscriber, then you know kind of the backstory. If you're new, do me a favor, click the subscribe button, click the little bell, and go back and watch the other videos so a lot of this one makes a little bit more sense. So I got a new truck. Daisy has been retired probably gonna sell it off to a buddy of mine. The truck itself didn't have any major mechanical problems that uh, would make it so it couldn't do this job anymore. There was just a whole pile of reasons that it made sense to go to a newer truck at this point. A whole bunch of financial reasons, and then on top of that, there was a whole bunch of safety reasons. And then there's the creature comfort stuff too, but one of the big things is safety. Let's kind of break it down. A 21-year-old truck does not have the same kind of safety features or driver aids that a new truck has. So my new truck is a Ford F-250 crew cab, long box, 6.7 diesel, uh, King Ranch edition. So I've got safety stuff and I got a lot of creature comfort stuff in here too. A 21 year old truck has got basic, like second gen, uh, analog brakes. That's it. Doesn't have much of anything else. This truck has like sixth generation analog brakes, plus it's got traction control, plus it's got stability control, it's got trailer anti sway built into it. It's got the keep lane assist. So if you're driving too close to the line over there and I'm the rumble strip king, it'll let you know that you're too close to the line over there. It's got 360 degree cameras and all that kind of stuff. So, it, you know, we've got side curtain airbags, airbags in the seats. The seat belts themselves have the pre-tensioner. It has the, um, the braking assist so if you're distracted or you're looking at this vehicle and that vehicle stops then the brakes will apply it themselves and try to get you to stop so you don't crash into that thing plus it's got a bunch of red lights that come up on the on the windshield so it's got a pile of extra safety features it's got an electronic locking rear differential daisy had limited slip so i mean and it was a tight limited slip, so it worked really good. So there's a pile of extra safety features on this truck that a 21 year old truck isn't gonna have. Now, you guys that have new trucks or have always had new trucks, it's not gonna be a big deal for you. But for me, going from a 21 year old truck to this truck, it's like stepping out of the stone age. The next thing is the power. 7.3 has a lot of power or what it was 21 years ago. Compared to trucks nowadays, not so much. It still does a great job. It, it, it pulled moon out of orbit, but it just doesn't do it very fast or very efficient. This truck has about twice the horsepower, has almost three times the torque. So doing mountains, going up, hauling a big camper, 
it's gonna be easier with this truck. And then on the safety end, once you go up a mountain, you gotta come back down it. So on my 7.3, it did not have an exhaust brake. They weren't offered with that 21 years ago. And it had the 4R100 transmission. That transmission is a great transmission. It's strong and they last. However, fourth gear has an overrunning clutch. What that means is when you're going downhill, it basically neutrals out. There's not engine braking in fourth gear on that transmission. And it's a four speed. So when you're going down a mountain, you just roll uncontrolled down the mountain. There's no engine braking in fourth gear. So you're working the trailer brakes constantly, the service brakes, trying not to overheat them, get it down to a manageable speed, and then you can shift into third gear, and then you can get some engine braking. The problem with that is you have to be going pretty slow. You can't go 50 or 60 down, down a mountain. You have to go like 40 or 45 because the engine is just screaming. If you're going like 55 down a mountain, so you gotta really slow down in order to get the engine braking to work really good with that transmission. And then if you touch the brake at all, it turns off the torque converter, then, then that makes it so you lose your engine braking. So I had a switch installed in the dash, I put it in, and I could leave the torque converter locked on all the time. It freaked the computer out when I did that, but it made it so I can go down mountains a little bit more controlled. This truck has all the, the, the standard stuff that a lot of you guys with the new trucks are like, that's no big deal. It's a big deal to me. Full on engine braking, two stage engine braking. It's got the, the tow haul mode on this that does some shifting for you and it allows you to go down a mountain. And you basically you set your cruise at 60 miles an hour and that's how fast you go down the mountain. You never go out down the mountain out of control. I was really amazed at how that worked. I thought that even if you didn't turn on the engine brake, that it wouldn't hold that speed going down a mountain, but it does really good. Actually, if you put it, uh, or if you just let off the gas and turn on the engine brake, you'll lose speed going down a mountain, which for me is insane because I've never had that before. The other thing is all the creature comforts. I mean, you just can't compare the two vehicles. This thing's got heated seats, cooled seats. It's got the infotainment center in the dash. There's a million buttons. Almost killed my damn self driving it back from the dealer because I'm pushing buttons. I'm like, what's that do? What's that? Oh crap, that folds my mirrors in. I used to have to go around and fold my mirrors in manually. Back in the day, I had to fold my mirrors in with my hand. Now you push a button, they go in and out. They fold, they do all that stuff. Got the, I don't know if you can see it, the panoramic moonroof. So that's kind of cool. So I got a lot, a lot of creature comforts going on in here. Dog's not gonna like this center console though. I've got the full center console, so it's just bucket seats in the center console. The other truck had the 40 20 40 split with the flip up um, uh, center console thing. Finley used to jump over and sit right there and then lay her head on my lap. So she's gonna have to figure something else out. She didn't like laying in the bed back there. She wanted to be like touching me the whole time we were driving. She'll just have to get used to it. And then there's the whole financial end of it. And that's really what we're doing this for, right? We gotta make money. Some people are just seeing the country and it pays for their travels. That's not me. And that's not most of you guys either. You gotta make money. Yeah, seeing the country is awesome. We get to see some really cool stuff out here. But you gotta make some money. This vehicle is far more fuel efficient than the 7.3. I know you 7.3 guys are gonna jump in the comments and say, oh, you can get 22 miles to the gallon with your 7.3. Bullshit. I've done everything that you can do to that 7.3 and with 410 gears on a dually, one ton, long box, crew cab, you are not gonna see anywhere near 20. I did have a 2000 with a full capper on the back that I could see about 18 and a half on the highway, but with the 2001, I didn't ever see anywhere near that. 
So the fuel efficiency on this truck is way, way better. Not so much loaded. It's only a couple miles per gallon better loaded. The 7.3 kind of never changed. It, what, it didn't matter if it was loaded or unloaded. It was pretty close in the fuel economy. Just maybe a difference of three or four uh, miles to the gallon. With this truck, it's a huge difference. You know, you, you can, this one pushes toward 20 miles to the gallon. In the right, can, I have seen like 22, but it was in the flat with no wind and that kind of stuff. But I came back from uh, Ashland, Virginia, all the way back to Bristol yesterday uh, and through the Pennsylvania mountains and all that stuff. And that whole, that whole trip coming back I averaged 18 and a half. So the increase is substantial. It's a lot of money savings there. There's some other savings, small or yet to be seen. Uh, tires is a big deal. I mean, I don't know if it's going to be a big deal, but on the dually, obviously, there's six tires you have to buy. On this one, there's only four. But with a dually, if you rotate them properly, you dually guys need to rotate your tires properly. The dually tires usually usually last longer because the two in the rear are sharing all the weight, so they're not being scuffed on the ground as hard. So if you rotate them right, a dually tire will last a little bit longer than a single wheel tire. The oil change is going to be slightly less expensive on this truck than on the 7.3 because it takes less oil. But I think that's going to be offset slightly by the two fuel filters that this truck has the 7.3 only had one and the two that are in this are more expensive than the 7.3 so I think it's going to be a wash when it comes to oil changes and fuel filters as far as the rest of the maintenance maintenance goes some people disagree but I've been working on vehicles for a long long time and there is really no difference no noticeable like you can put your finger on this is cheaper as far as maintenance goes between a dually and a single wheel of the same year make and model and all that here's the thing brakes are still brakes changing the transmission fluid is still the same it's got the same transmission changing the coolant same there it's got the same coolant capacity the same cooling system all that's the same differential fluid Sometimes in a dually, you got a little bit bigger rear axle, so maybe you have half a quart more uh, gear lube to put in. So that's not a really a big deal. Light bulbs and all that, all going to be the same thing. They're the same price. So the actual day-to-day -day maintenance on a dually versus a single wheel, there's no difference. I know a lot of people disagree on that, but if you really look at it, you'll see that I'm telling you the truth. So this is the fourth run that I've taken with this truck. The first one was to Meridian, Idaho. Then I went to Reno, Nevada. Then I went to Ashland, Virginia. And now I'm going to Newport News, Virginia. After the, the second run, I noticed a little bit of oil on the front of the camper that I was pulling on the tongue. It had kind of a primer tongue on that little camper. And I got looking at the truck because I thought, well, something's leaking. I've seen that before. When something leaks, you see it in little spots in the dust on what you're towing, or you'll see it on the mud flap. So I got looking and found a pinion seal was starting to seep. So I had to replace the pinion seal. Now I did get a 40,000 mile warranty with this truck <coughs> this is a used truck it's got about 100,000 miles on it and I got a 40,000 mile warranty with it uh, powertrain so that sort of would be covered under the powertrain but it's kind of one of those gray areas seals a lot of times won't be covered under the powertrain warranty if the pinion bearing went bad and the seal failed after that then the seal would be covered and the pinion bearing would be. But the seal itself is kind of a wear item. You gotta replace them from time to time. 
So I talked to the warranty company and I talked to the dealer and the part to just purchase the part at the Ford dealer was $17, which was half the price that Advance or O'Reilly's and AutoZone quoted me. And neither one of those three could, could get it fast. Ford dealer had four of them in stock. So I was like, sweet, 17 bucks. They said it would be $128 installed. So it's basically 28 bucks for the seal and an hour to put it in. Rear pinion seals don't take that long. Uh, anybody that is taking their vehicle to a shop to get a pinion seal, if they quote you 600 bucks to do a pinion seal, they're ripping you off. It's literally five bolts. Four to take the drive shaft down, one to take the pinion flange off, and then the, the seal's right there. You pop it out, drive a new seal in, put the flange back on, put the drive shaft back in. It's not a big deal. So my warranty has a $100 deductible. And the Ford dealer would need it overnight. So I'd have to get a hotel and pay my $100 deductible. And I said, I don't think so. And it would put me a day behind. So I said, nope. So I bought the seal 17 bucks and... I got another load, took it down to Virginia. I stopped at a pilot there, got my tools out, and changed the seal in a pilot parking lot out there. I tried to do a video about it, but I was kind of in a rush, and I just wanted to get it done. And there were people that kept coming over going, what you doing? What you doing? Because I was changing a pinion seal <laughs> in a parking lot at a pilot. And it just happened to be where I, the only parking spot I could find get was right in front of the pumps so everybody would pull in pump their gas and just watch me laying underneath the the truck i got the radio playing and all my lights out there so i could see things happen the truck's got a hundred thousand miles on it now i didn't get like a super screaming deal on this truck but i think that i got a pretty good deal considering today's truck market one thing that's kind of cool about this truck it is it's not been molested at all now, I personally would have liked to have it deleted and have an Easy Link tuner already installed in it. That would that would have saved me like eighteen hundred bucks. But doesn't have that. I'll have to do it myself. But what it didn't come with is it's never pulled a trailer in its life ever. There's no fifth wheel hitch. There's no puck system. There was nothing. The hitch in the bumper uh, hitch in the back. The truck didn't come with that insert because it's got that two and a half inch hitch and it didn't come with the insert to convert it down to two inch. And the paint inside the hole hadn't been all scratched up and it wasn't all rusty. Now I did check because yeah, yeah, I know. You can spray, spray some spray paint in there and make it look new. But the paint that was on the outside of the, the hitch is exactly the same as it was on the inside of the hitch. And if you know how these the chain hookups back there uh, work on these they suck they're, they're too big you can't hook nothing to them so you got to get a, a d a d ring and put it in there so you can hook your chains from your camper in there and that little area wasn't all banged up or scratched up or anything i felt the edges they're nice and sharp and i've already got them banged up from uh, the campers that i pulled already so it had never had a hook put on those hook locations. So it had never pulled a trailer in its life. I didn't believe the salesman, you know, you never believe the salesman, when he said that it was an old guy that drove it 100,000 miles and traded it in for a brand new truck, that he said this guy does, that's what he does. He, dry, he buys a truck every year, or, or not every year, but he buys a truck, drives it 100,000 miles, and then trades it in for a new truck. He says the guy has done it forever. So I was like, cool. It did complicate things on the getting ready to haul end of it. I had to, uh, I had to put it in the shop to get fifth wheel rails put in it. So that kind of ended up being a wash as far as um, as far as that was another wave driver there. It ended up being a wash as far as um, the cost to get my hitch converted over because uh, the cost for putting the fifth wheel rails in was about the same as 
converting my fifth wheel hitch to the puck system if this would have had the puck system in it, but it doesn't. This truck has like every option except the fifth wheel puck and gooseneck setup. But everything else, it's got. I was going through the list of all the options and it's got all kinds of crap. So anyway, I had to have the fifth wheel rails put in it and the, the airbags and then I was ready to go. So now why an F-250 as opposed to another Dually? The reason is Daisy had a gross vehicle weight rating of 11,500 pounds. She was long bed, dually, crew cab. The new duallys are 14,000 plus. So being non-CDL, I would not be able to get the higher paying loads. And now the whole point of getting this truck is to make more money. So this truck has a 10,000 pound GVWR, so it will allow me, I could take up to a 16,000 pound camper GVWR, I don't think I'm ever gonna haul anything that big, but I'll be able to live in that higher paying range. Right now I've taken a couple of the second tier down uh, campers, just to kind of get used to the truck and how it reacts to the road and traffic and things like that and I'm really loving it so now it's time to start putting some putting some heavy cam uh, heavier campers on her and uh, and pulling it down the road and making some money and I know this video is kind of long I just wanted to explain a lot of differences and similarities between a dually and a single wheel and why I went with an F-250 what some people would consider downgrading um, I don't really see it downgrading from my dually. Now, if you had a brand new dually and then you went down to a brand new 250, it might be a it might be a downgrade. The only real difference that I'm noticing right now is just a little bit of tire wiggle. And I don't think that I mean obviously dually is going to be more stable. Uh, and I haven't been in any serious wind been in about 16 mile an hour wind so far with this one but I the tire mush but I've got Goodyear Wranglers on here I don't care for those tires they're fine tires in general and I've used them a lot for like off-road vehicles and whatnot but they to me they have a really soft sidewall so once these wear out I'll switch to something with a stiffer sidewall and then you get less of that I don't know, that ocean effect. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Truck feels like it's swaying, but when you look in the mirror, the camper ain't doing nothing. Camper's going straight down the road. That's tire mush. So that is it. The new Daisy. We'll do a walk around and all that good stuff, but that's what I'm driving now. So I think I'm just going to keep the name Daisy in honor of my grandma. If you don't know the story behind that, you'll have to go back and find one of the videos that, uh, that, that has that story. It's way back in the beginning. So thanks for watching. I'm going to get on down here to Newport News and get this thing delivered, and we'll see what we get into next. So as always, have safe travels, and I hope to see you on the road.